Hey everybody, welcome back to episode number two of my new Helix in the Studio uh, series. Today we're going to be talking all about reamping. Now, I don't know if everybody out there knows what reamping is, but I think it is one of the most useful things we can use when working in the studio recording guitars. It's a giant safety net is really what it is. And let me give you a quick rundown on what reamping is. <clears throat> Let's go back in the day where in a typical studio, uh, you know, a guitar player would be plugged into his pedal board or his amp, a microphone would be put in front of his amp and he would play, that would be printed down to tape, and that was his performance. Now what happened later if, you know, maybe the engineer or the guitar player realized, I really didn't like that guitar tone. It, it was pretty awful, you know, the performance was wonderful, I loved what I did, but I hate the guitar tone. Well, obviously you could compress it and EQ it and add delays and reverbs and everything else, but if the core tone was no good, we were kind of stuck with something that maybe we weren't happy with. Now with reamping, what that means is at the same time that we're performing, you know, and we're plugged into our amp, a lot of times what a lot of players will do is in some manner, and we'll talk about how the Helix can do this and how it makes it really the ultimate reamping tool out there. Um, we would split the signal so that we recorded on a separate track just the direct sound of the guitar. No processing from amps or effects or anything, just the direct output coming straight out of a guitar from our pickups and record that to another track. Now what that would allow us to do is use something called a reamp box of sorts. And there, was, there used to be a lot of these out on the market. Uh, I believe John Cuna Birdie uh, was one of the first guys to market a box, if I'm not uh, mistaken. He was the uh, producer uh, and engineer on so many of the early Joe Satriani albums. Really brilliant uh, uh, producer and engineer. So that would then allow you, after the fact, if you didn't like the actual recorded tone you got, you could send this dry guitar signal back through whatever you wanted, a different amp, maybe the same amp with different settings, maybe a different microphone on it, whatever. You kept your performance, but you gave yourself the future flexibility of being able to change the tone, change the amp, add different effects or what, what, what have you. I mean, we could also add effects after the fact uh, in our DAW <clears throat> at mix, but it really opened up a lot of flexibility. So reamping is just a wonderful thing. So what I want to do today is show you very in detail with Reaper again and Cubase. Um, and there'll be two separate sections on here. I'll do Reaper first. And then I'll try to put on the screen somewhere here where the Cubase uh, portion of the video starts, just in case somebody isn't using Reaper and they want to do Cubase, right? So uh, either way, we'll, uh, you can jump uh, to whatever suits you the best. So let's go over to Reaper. Okay, so here we are in Reaper with our empty project file as it comes up. So I want to take you through, I'm going to just record a really silly little guitar riff um, with the DI. Now we, in, in episode one, I showed you how you could assign different inputs so that you got your signal flowing to where it needed to go. Today we're going to talk about that, but also assigning the outputs for doing the reamping. But there's two ways we can do reamping. So first things first, what I need to do is I need to add a track. So I'm just going to hit control T and up pops my track. Okay, so right now we don't know what's going to go on this track. But as I mentioned in episode one, the USB 7 output when Helix is hooked up as an audio interface, as I again discussed in episode one, please go back and watch episode one because there's a lot of things I'll be referring to in this episode that kind of need to be known from episode one. So go back and take a look at that before we continue here and it'll make a lot more sense. <clears throat> But th this track doesn't know what it's receiving from Helix. We have to set it up so it's talking to it. And what we want is we want this track to actually receive USB 7, which will be our dry direct signal, okay? Um, so the way I do that is I arm the recording and I go over here. First of all, I would want to go up like I showed in the first video to preferences and that takes a second to pop up. Uh, when it does, I wanna make sure Helix is is my uh, assigned audio interface. And I want to make sure that I have activated the inputs all the way up to number eight so that we get to see number seven in our list here. So once we've activated, arm the recording button, we go over here to input and we simply choose input mono, input seven. Now whatever we record onto this track from the Helix is going to be our dry, unprocessed guitar part, okay? 
Pretty simple stuff. We could also, I'm not gonna do it here, but we could also add a second track just recording the uh, main output of the Helix so we have the process track as well. And that's one way you can do it. I'm just gonna deal with the DI today. So what this is gonna allow me to do now is to grab my guitar. Um, I'm using my Ultimate Placator Line 6 Marketplace preset just for this. Um, and as we can hear, I'm monitoring from the Helix. And the reason that is as such is because I've got the output set to multi, okay? If I was to change that um, output, sorry, I have the output set to multi. If I was to change it to USB 1.2, I'm no longer monitoring the Helix. So I want that set to multi so I get my process tone. <laughs> But it's funny, you hear that now, but wait till you hear what gets recorded because we have this set to USB 7. In fact, let me do this. Let me just set this to input 1, 2. Now we see the meters are picking up the noise. And so if I hit uh, Control R here and start recording, it recorded my guitar part as I would want it, but we don't want that. We want this to be set on mono USB 7. Now you see all the noise is gone because this is a distorted patch. There's a little bit of noise in the background. I could turn the noise gate on if I want to get rid of that. But now we're just getting the dry guitar. One thing you want to do, and this is something I always tell everybody when before recording, is do one strike of your guitar so that that can kind of be something to line up the reamped track with the original. And what happens with reamping is once we send out the reamp track, and I'll explain this a little more later, it's going to take a number of milliseconds to reach back into the DAW. So a lot of times our reamp track is not perfectly lined up where it should be. So if we give ourselves kind of one quick stroke like this, uh, in Cubase I do it a little different, a way I like a little bit better. Um, but we can line up the two tracks. I'll show you that a little bit later. So what I'll do is as I'm doing the count in, I'll just give myself one stroke like this that'll be my kind of sync tool or line to, lining up tool later on, okay? So here we go, Control R to start recording. All right, sorry for the lame little riffs there. But you see that I have now recorded something that's going to sound like something. Let's see what that sounds like now. So if I go back through here, <coughs> excuse me, and turn my metronome off, let's hear what we have on tape. Okay, that doesn't sound like what we were just listening to at all, does it? really does not. And that's because I recorded USB 7, which is the di guitar. Now I can take this and I can reamp it. Now, number one way <clears throat> of reamping this, and we won't even need this little reference click at the beginning, would simply be able, if you have Helix Native, to simply load up an instance of Helix Native on the track and you're done. Put your settings and you're good. So watch what happens in Reaper. I go to my little FX button right here and I click that and what happens is this dialog opened off the, off the uh, window. But what I did, I've actually already searched for it here, but if I clear that, you see a list of all the effects that I have loaded up here. Well, I can just go down on my filter here and say native. And look what pops up, VST3 Helix native. Okay, so I'll double click that to add it. It's making sure that I'm authorized to use it, and I am, so there I go. Um, and yeah, so here's a, preset that whatever it's just I think this is from my my boogie preset pack from the line 6 marketplace well now that I've put that on look what's going to happen to my sound it's now being processed by helix native I could come in there and change that to an overdrive sound I guess that's reamping, sort of. We're using that DI track and we can go and tweak native however we want. That's really a simple straight, a, straight ahead way of doing it. 
But let's not do it that way. Let's use the hardware unit because, let's face it, not everybody. So I'm going to remove Helix Native. So now we're back to... Okay, just our dry signal. Not everybody has Helix Native that has a Helix, right? It's a great tool. I use it all the time. But what if we just want to reamp this through the unit? Well, we have to take a series of steps. We're going to add a new track, so I'll go Control T, and this is I'm going to I'm going to take the record arm off of this one now. Now we need to route this back to the Helix, and that's where you say, well, how do I do that? Well, there's a couple steps we have to make: one on the Helix itself or HX Edit, and one within Reaper. Okay, so I come down to my track one, which I want to send out of the computer back to the Helix. Right now, it's just being sent out to our main output bus, which is feeding our speaker so we can hear what's going on. We don't really want that track to go and be sent out those anymore because we don't want to hear that anymore. We want to hear the processed Helix sound, if that makes sense, okay? So what I can do is I come down here to my mixer and right here it says route. And if I click that dialog box for track one, where our DI track is, it opens up this dialog box we can move up and it says add new hardware output. What we want to do is we want to send this out to a different place, okay, if that makes sense. So I click there and I'm going to choose output three for no other reason than it's available and it's there, okay. So now let's see what happens when we play this track. Nothing. Okay, so we're still hearing the same track going out the outputs, the main outputs, which we don't really want. So what I can do is turn off, you see here, master send. When I do that, now watch what happens when I play. You see the meter's moving, but we're not hearing anything. I've taken this out of the main signal path, but I need to send it to the helix. So I'm sending it now out of this new output three. So here's what we need to do. I need to get helix native back. I need to go to our input and change that from guitar and change that to USB 3. And you see why. I've set up, where'd our dialog box go? Here we go. I've set up this track to send out, out of output 3. That's, the, that's the, the, the interface's output 3. And now I've told it Helix to say, okay, accept input three. It's no longer our guitar going into it. It's now going to be our DI track. And hopefully that makes sense. So this is my ultimate Placator patch from Line 6 Marketplace. And I'm set up on Snapshot 4, which is just an overdriven sound. So now when we come back over here to Reaper, we should now be feeding that signal into Helix and we should hear just it with the master send off, okay? So let's see what that sounds like now. There's the tone I'm looking for, great. And I could tweak that at my Helix if I wanted to or, or otherwise. Now here's the problem if we left master send on. Watch as I play this. Here we're hearing the DI track as well. I don't, I mean, that's not going to do any harm. That's not going to get recorded again, but it's also just going to be very distracting, right? We don't really want to hear that. So we just keep that master send turned off on that one. And then when we play this, we get the tone we want. But what we need to do is record that back into our project. So we come to our new track here, we arm it for recording. And we noticed over here that we were set on the output to multi. So USB 1, 2 is going to get its signal, right? So we can set this here input to input 1, 2. Now, think of the signal flow. It's coming out of the DI track on USB 3. It's going into the helix on USB 3, going through our signal path, coming to the output and being output on USB 1, 2, which we now come over here and we should be able to record that right onto USB 1, 2. We don't need to put input monitoring on. We can just shut it off simply because we're going to hear what's coming out of the Helix already. And you see that my meters are moving here. Okay, so let's do this. Let's go back home. I'm going to hit Control-R. I'm going to let it run through that whole part and re-record. Okay, here we go.
Watch your screen as you see the uh, it, it update. That's it. So now I no longer need this track up here. Well, not that I no longer need it. I want to get rid of it in case I do need it, but I don't want to hear it processing anymore. So I can just simply mute it. And now we can listen back to what we actually recorded. And I can adjust the volume with the fader to wherever I need it to be volume wise, or I could pan it or, you know, I could do a number of things with it if I, right? But here's what I was saying about this little click at the beginning. And let me just kind of enlarge this here so that we can see. I want to make sure that these little reference points line up perfectly. And it's really going to depend on the latency of the system. What you can see is right here, is where this click, reference click, started. That's where it should end up being. So I need to nudge, I need to nudge this over. And what I'll do is I'll oftentimes just move my cursor right there. And I took lock off, it was, it was, it was snapping to the grid. So I want that off and I simply just move this so that it's perfectly in, whoops, just control Z, Z that. It's perfectly in line and you can get right down zooming in here to see that that is just right on the money. So now things are going to be lined up and we're not going to have our reamp track kind of out of time with what was going on. That's it. That's reamping in Reaper. Very cool, right? And then once we're done, like I said, we can just mute this out, archive it for later use if we ever want to come back and reamp those tracks yet again. Okay. Hopefully I covered everything there. Let's now go over to Cubase. I'm going to get rejigged here and reset up. Let's go over to Cubase and I'll show you how to do the same thing in Cubase. Be right back. Okay, so here I am back in Cubase and I'm going to do things slightly different than what I was doing with Reaper. I'm going to show you how I would utilize this in, a, in more of a project setting. And I'm using one of the demo videos I recently did and you guys will never guess what song this was influenced by. Um, but this is my demo video for my Line 6 Marketplace British preset pack and I believe this I think I have it set on the JCM 800 model. Okay, so what I've done, and again, we want to record, much like I just showed in Reaper, we would want to first off come to our studio tab, go to studio setup, make sure that Helix is our chosen audio interface, uh, make sure that our inputs are active, right, or that they're available to us, um, visible to us is what I should say. Not necessarily active, but visible so that we can choose them. Uh, if we need them, okay? So we're all set up for that. Now, so much like I did in Reaper, I should be able to come over here, simply add a track, hit T, hit an audio track. I want to use mono input seven and just name that, let's say, guitar underscore DI. Our track gets added right here, okay? And let me just solo that so I don't hear the rest of the track. I can arm that for recording. Now, if I grab my guitar, I should, no problem, just be able to record and we see right here on our project I get my DI track recorded as I want it. Okay, so that works. I don't want to do that for this project. We want to do this a different way with the existing project I've already recorded, okay? So again, one way we could utilize this is we could simply just go to that track, uh, open up our, our track inspector box here, and I can just go to line six, load up Helix Native. Helix Native will pop up, and then I can process that track in any way that I see fit. But I'm not interested in that right now. We've already talked about how we can do that. I'm gonna just remove this track because I don't wanna use that. I already have something else set up here for us. So, um, as I just mentioned, we could use Helix Native. That, that's a simple way. But let me go through my tracks first. So what I always do is I always add pairs of tracks, like I believe I mentioned in episode one. Guitar one, guitar DI one, guitar two, guitar DI two, guitar three, guitar three, DI, and so on and so forth. 
And so if I mute all of the DI tracks and activate all of the non-DI tracks, here's what I get. And I have a little backing track made up here using, uh, like I showed uh, before, a superior drummer, uh, moto bass and whatnot. But here's, here's the track as it stands, as it was recorded. Okay, so we can sort of get the idea. Something weird going on with this track here, but we're not gonna use that anyways. Okay, so um, that's the way it sounded, but I also, let's mute those out and then bring the DI tracks back. So as I was recording this, I recorded monitoring the tracks as such, and then I had my DI's muted and I can use them later. So now what would happen is if, if we listen to this with just the DI's, Okay, obviously something missing, right? So, as I mentioned, let's do this. Cubase has a really interesting feature that once we're done using tracks, if we don't want them to visually take up space and confuse us in trying to find where our tracks are, we can go over here to the side inspector and go to visibility. If you notice, it shows all the tracks in the project. Well, I want to get rid of all my non-DI tracks, so I can simply go to the check mark over here and watch what happens to guitar one, two, three, and four. I can just check guitar one, two, three, Four, and they disappear from my project. They're still there, they're not visible, they're just gonna be gone for now, right? So I click on that, I can get them back anytime I need. So it's, it's a nice way to not have to delete something that you might want later, but also have it out of the way so it's not cluttered up. So another nice little side point feature. Okay, so what I could do here, as was mentioned before, is I could simply come in and throw on an instance of Helix Native, let's say, right? Uh, I could put this here, Get that to come up and you know again uh, I'm on I think something from my Mesa boogie boogie preset pack from the line 6 marketplace I put that here let's just solo that so we can kind of hear what it's doing and if I bypass native okay I don't want to do that though so I'm going to put no effect there and come back and we have all our DI tracks. Now, one thing, oh, I think I see what's going on. I want to turn off all of my DIs. I was using Helix Native previously on a project, this project. So I want to turn these all off. Make sure these all go back to zero because that's going to be the output of what hits hardware Helix as we reamp. And I want to make sure that these are all centered. And this is an important point too when you're sending the output. You want to make sure you're sending the output just set flat to zero, because if, if I was to send this out with a lower volume, it's gonna hit the Helix amp with less volume, therefore the distortion's not gonna be there, the overdrive's not gonna be there. So I need this to be set to zero and to the center. Okay, so again now, we've gotta send this out to the Helix, right? So we come back over to the Helix and I've got my JCM 800 preset over here. Now, just like before, I need to set the input appropriately to get whatever output we have coming out of Cubase, which we haven't set yet. So let's set that first. Let's go back to Cubase. We're going to go to Studio and Audio Connections. We are going to go to the Outputs tab and make sure that, I already have it here, but let me remove this so that we can see how we do this. So we go over to, not the inputs tab, but the outputs tab. You see you have a stereo out. I'm actually using a feature in, in uh, Cubase called Control Room. So that's how I'm getting my output. And you can see that set to output one and two. That's our main outputs, right? So I go to outputs and I say add bus. Okay, it's gonna ask me how many buses do you want? New, new outputs. And I just want one mono one, okay? And I'm gonna add that bus. And then you'll see what comes up here, mono out. Now I can rename that just for 
my own purposes, I could say I want that to be called reamp. Now it's called reamp. And I want to make sure that's set to output three, which it was automatically, but I, I could use five if I wanted. I could use whatever, as long as we make the helix talk to it. So now think again, we're now sending tracks out on USB three, right? So the helix has to be set to USB three. There you go. And that's good. Now, the problem is I've got to send these tracks out to USB 3.0 as well. So if I, if I open up the, the track dialog here, right now it's, see the output up here? It's going to stereo out. Watch what happens when I click that. Oh, reamp is in the list. That's the output I just added. So we want to, add, to click that, and now this track is going to send out of USB 3.0 into the Helix, and then it's going to come back in on USB 1.2, going back into the Helix. And again, in the audio connections, my inputs, my stereo in is USB 1, 2, as we can see here. Notice I have my mono input 7 set that we were using before for reamping. Okay, I hope that's clear so far. So we have our, our signal path going. So we've got to be careful now. We've got to go over to Guitar DI2. We've got to set that also to reamp out. We want to go to DI3, send that to reamp out, DI4 also to reamp out. Now, the problem is those are all gonna be feeding out at the same time, we don't want that. So what I wanna do, I'm gonna mute all the ones that I don't need, okay? So now I'm only feeding guitar DI1 out, and that's gonna hit the helix. So what happens if I, if I play this now? Let's hear what happens. Okay, it's, it's maybe a little too loud for what we wanna hear, but it's, it's good, we're gonna be okay with that. We can adjust that later. Okay, so what I wanna do then is I come into my DI track, I kind of expand this out and I zoom into it, but I'm gonna double click it. And you'll notice down here, opens up that particular wave file inside of an extra dialog box at the bottom. I'm gonna zoom right in and I'm gonna take my pencil tool right here and I'm gonna add a little click, okay? So now you can see up here, that little click was added and that's going to be reamped, okay? Very important, because that's how we're gonna line up our tracks after, like I did in the Reaper example using just a guitar stroke, okay, if that makes sense. So we're gonna record that. We can always edit it out later so it's not part of the final mix. Now, I wanna go back to my mix console down here. Okay, so we're ready to reamp now, but what we need to do is we need to add a track to record this to. So I'm gonna hit my T button. I want a stereo track that's going to be on input one and two. I'm going to call this guitar one. Okay, so there's my track. Now, this should simply record what we have coming off of this because I assigned it to USB one two input, which is what I already showed you is coming out of the Helix, right? Now, Make sure that our Helix is set up. We're set up USB 3.4. We're on our multi-output. Everything should be fine. Let's see what happens when I hit record. All right, there's my track. So now what I can do is mute my guitar DI, turn that off, and what we're gonna see is that you're gonna hear that click first, and then you're gonna hear your guitar now recorded with your track. Now, what I can do is I can take that and I can say, let's pan that left, and let's turn that down by about five dB. Great. We've, we got what we want. Now, you might think I'm gonna go line this up. Let's see how much off it is, how much difference it is. You see where our click is, and you see where our start is here. We've gotta slide those over. What I'm gonna do, and this is what I do to save time and not complicate matters, I'm going to go reamp the rest of my tracks and then just move them all 
off of based off that one mark. I just find that easier than adding a mark on every reamp track. But if you're only doing one, then yeah, by all means, just use it and adjust it. So guitar DI one now is done. So I'm going to come over to my visibility and I'm going to get rid of that. Well, actually, no, I'm not because I'm going to need that to line it up. Let's leave that. That's not really bothering too much. I'll just shrink it down a little bit. But make sure the guitar DI one now is muted. Now I need to add another track, which is going to be guitar two. Simple enough. Same parameters, stereo in, that's what we want. No problem there. We arm that for recording. We unmute Guitar DI2. Now this should record Guitar DI2 through the same preset and snapshot, which I'll just leave like that. I'm sorry, I should hit the record button. Simple enough, we continue on. I'm gonna mute guitar two. I now can go and say, let's pan, let's move this volume down to about the same level and then pan that hard right. And let's see what we have now. You can see our recording is starting to come together. Okay, now I'm going to unmute guitar DI three. This is a lead part. So I'm gonna actually come over to my Helix and I'm just going to change that snapshot to lead. And uh, my tempo is 123. I'm gonna make sure the delay is in time with the song. So I just typed 123 into the Helix. Uh, now I need to add another track. So I'm gonna come over to my T dialog box again. Now we're just gonna go, I don't know, let's call it lead guitar one. All right. And we put that in. Now I should simply be able to take this arm the recording. I have all my other DIs muted. I have the third one ready to go. It's not even coming in until here, so I can actually just move it right to there so we don't have to listen to everything. And I hit record, it should go down. I let the delays kind of taper off so they're okay. And that's done, okay. So now I mute that and I uh, always wanna be saving as I'm going. I'm gonna need one more track because I have a harmony here. So I'm gonna add one more track. We'll call this uh, lead harmony one, simple enough. You see how quickly this can be done once you know what you're doing with it. And it's just this little piece right here. So I'm gonna unmute Guitar DI for making sure all my other Guitar DIs are, are muted and I can, put this into record mode and then hit record. And that's it. That, sorry, that lead guitar was very loud. I forgot to turn that down. Um, and now I can mute that, take that out of record mode. So now what I can do is I need to line these tracks up to make sure that the latency didn't throw them off. So I'm going to use my control button and I'm going to click the one I just did the next one, second and first guitar. Those are all the guitar parts. Then I'm gonna zoom in and I'm just dragging down with my mouse to zoom in. I'm going to line this up as such. And then what I wanna do, I'm not gonna zoom that much. I'm gonna kinda of get this over in the ballpark. All those guitar parts will move now. And you can see that's probably close enough right there. Then what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I edit this so that that's no longer going to make any sound. So I just shorten that up, shorten that up. Just get everything so it's nice and neat. Now I can go over and get rid of all the DI'd guitar parts. Okay, now, because we don't need those anymore. Now I have a nice, neat project here. And like I said, I can come in and decide to shorten these up so the noise isn't there. These rhythm guitars are out right there. Might even put a little tiny fade at the end. Uh, do the same thing with 
guitar too, because those don't have any delay on them. Now, the lead guitar has a delay. And I can decide whether I want to cut that off or fade it out, which I think I'll do there. And then we also have a harmony part here, which I don't want any noise at the beginning. And uh, same thing, that has a bit of a delay on it, so. And I can come to the beginning of the lead and just trim these down. So everything's nice and neat. I'm not gonna have any crazy noise or anything like that. So with the lead guitar part here, I could maybe pan it slightly to the right, the harmony part slightly to the left, and maybe bring that down a little bit quieter. Uh, let's hear what that harmony part was anyways. Cool, with the, uh, with the lead. Okay, let's listen to it all together. I just reamped the entire project. Here's the finished. And that would be it, done. That's the reamping in a nutshell. So it works really well, really quick too. I mean, you do have to listen through the whole file to let it record, right? If you use Helix Native, obviously you don't. You just plop Native on and it's ready to go and you can do a whole bunch of instances. I would need four instances of Helix Native, choose them all and then export my mix, I'd be good. Now, obviously I can do more work on this with panning and volume and if I wanted to go process it differently. As you can see, I don't do any post-processing on it. All those guitars have no inserts or sends on them, right? On the uh, drums and bass and whatnot, I obviously do for the mix, right? Just to get a little bit punchier, a little bit of EQ or something from, uh, you know, IK Multimedia's, uh, what's that called? Their Max, whatever their plug-in bundle is. I love their stuff, really nice stuff, Isotope. But on the guitars, never, I never touch it. Because I, I did that as a demo for a Marketplace preset pack. That's the British preset pack, uh, love that. And you can see how it works really nice in the mix with nothing else done to it. You know, a little bit of layering. The, I mean, the single lead guitar, there it is, right? And it sits beautifully, it cuts nicely. Quick little solo I pulled off with it, but I love that tone. Everything works real nice. That's a great pack for just rock music, man. It, it all those I've used those tones in so many mixes, and I just never touch them, uh, including some of my own music. So really nice stuff. That's the British preset pack. It's available for Stomp, Pod, Go. It's available for Helix. So little shameless plug there on that. What do you guys think? Does that help you with the reamping? I hope I got everything. I really had mental list of of all the things I wanted to pinpoint, and I hope. I didn't leave anything out and I hope that answered questions. Um, if you have any more, please send them my way. I always do my best to answer questions. I've been bombarded lately with questions and it's been very difficult. I'm not ignoring anybody. I just don't have the hours and the day to get back to everybody. So I really apologize. I do my best and I, I try to, but uh, sometimes it's just not possible. But. So again, thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed that and I really hope that helps some folks. Um, please share this uh, as much as you can with as many folks as you think would get use out of it. This is what this is about, getting you guys to be able to do this on your own. And like I said, there's probably a lot of people who already know how to do this and it's fine, but hopefully there was some little tips and tricks in there that will help you in reamping. So number one thing I could suggest, always capture the DI track. Always, always capture it. You can see how powerful it is, even if you never use it again. That, who cares? I mean, it just doesn't, doesn't matter, right? We just leave it alone. It's not taking up, it's barely taking up any disk space, right? But it saved me so many times when, when I've just wanted to go back and showcase a different tone with a different preset. I don't have to go re-record all the parts, right? So that's the, the wonderful thing about it. So thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit the little notification bell. I will be back soon with a lot more content in this series and others. And uh, thanks again for, for, for stopping by and giving me your time. Ciao for now.